بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد الشاكرين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وقائد الغرل المحجلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال جل وعلا في القرآن المجيد الفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن قال تعالى في مقام ما المسيح بن مريم إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل وأمه صديقة كان يأكلان الطعام وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ينزل عيسى بن مريم قبل قيام الساعة ويقتل الخنزير ويكسر ويكسر السليب حكما عدلا او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وعلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين الحمد لله وثانك الله تبارك وتعالى ف making us Muslim, give, guiding us to Islam, guiding us to a pure faith, a clear faith, um, and this is one of the, cla the distinguishing factors of Islam. If you look at all the other religions, there is confusion, there is uh, unnecessary um, disclosed or you could say um, contentious issues within the creed whereas Allah Taala has given us Islam which is the mahajjatan bayda the white pure open path siratun mustaqim clear open path wide and straight and takes us to Allah whereas if we just look at Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah talks about the Jews and the Christians. And then Allah generally, the scholars say, غَيْرُ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَالْضَالِينَ refers to the Jews and Christians. Allah says, we, when we ask Allah, we say, Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. The path which who you guided or who you, uh, who you blessed. And not the path of those who you are angry with or those who are misguided. And it generally refers to the Jews and the Christians. Um, and here we understand that all three of these religions started off pure. At the beginning, they were true, they were pure. And then two of them went off the path. And Islam, alhamdulillah, has been preserved. And we're coming to a time now where around Christmas, this, this time period, where people say this is the time where our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Isa Islam was born. And many different things happen at this time. And people are celebrating certain things. But we have to now come back to the facts. Who was Sayyidina Isa Islam? Who does he mean to you and I? And what's the difference between what we believe in him and what the Jews and what the Christians? Sayyidina Isa and Islam, Jesus, is more contentious and more controversial a character than even our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because the Christians and the Jews don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad. Whereas in Prophet Isa alayhi salam, uh, regarding him, the Jews have a complete one extreme, the Christians have another extreme, and the Muslims are in the middle. So what do we know about him and where do we start and where do we end? First of all, the first thing we have to understand is Sayyidina Isa Islam is a Palestinian. Palestinian Jew born in Palestine, in Baytul Laham, Bethlehem. And he lived most of his life in Palestine as well. And he was raised up from there and he will return back in Sham, etc. We know this about Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salam. That's the first thing we know. We know that they are Christians. From the time of Isa and Islam at churches, from the time of Isa, or just after the time of Isa and Islam that were present there and they've actually been bombed as well, etc. So this is the first thing you know, he was a Palestinian. That means all these people are going to supposedly celebrate the birthday of a Palestinian, whilst they are also funding the death of so many Palestinians. That's the first thing we have to know. Secondly, where does the story start, where does it end? Isa alayhi salam is mentioned more in the Quran than our own Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. More than 25 times he's mentioned in the Quran. He's mentioned as one of the Ulul Azm, one of the great, one of the five great prophets of the top caliber, you could say. Um, and he, if we don't even talk about him, talk about his mother. 
Sayyidina Maryam. Um, she has she is mentioned by name in the Quran, which is a uh, virtue afforded to very few, very few men and only one woman, which is her. She has a chapter mentioned by, uh, mentioning her by name in the Quran, so a chapter named after her. And this is again such a great virtue. She was the niece of Sayyidina Zakaria, according to most scholars. And her mother and father, her mother, could, they didn't have children for a while. And then her mother, she prayed to Allah and she said that whatever, whenever, if I have a child, the child will be yours. Meaning if it's a son and she assumed it'd be a son, then basically I'm giving him over for you. He will worship you, he will serve your religion, whatever. Then she became pregnant after a few days. Imran, her father at that time was, the scholars say, about 70 years old. So obviously they kind of, he felt like he's not going to have a child after this. But then Allah blessed him with a child. And then she made this oath that this child is going to be for you. When the child was born, he turned out to be a girl, Maryam. But then now because she made the oath, so they decided, okay, this child is going to be for Allah. It's going to serve Allah, she's going to serve Allah, etc. So they made a small place for her in Masjid Al-Aqsa uh, where she would worship Allah, etc. She would maybe serve, do what she could. And Zakaria salam, was the Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa at the time. Zakaria salam, was the Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa. And he was her uncle, so he would look after her. He was the one. And the story, Quran even mentions that وَكَفَّلَهَا Zakaria. When Zakaria would enter the room, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَا الْمِحْرَابِ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَةِ He would find fruits out of season. Meaning, um, not only out, out of season fruits, but fruits which were lush, which were big, where other people were not getting them, and other kind of foods. And he asked, Anna laki hada. Where would you get this from? And she said, Allah. She would say, this is a secret, which only between me and Allah. So she had a very close connection to Allah. The Prophet said she perfected faith. This was Maryam. Now, later on, she's going through her life. And then she comes, the next incident comes where, of course, Sayyidina Jibra'il alayhi salam, the Archangel Gabriel, he comes to her and then he tells her that he's come from Allah and he's coming to blow uh, into her the soul. Or the, from, from the word of Allah, he's going to blow into her the spirit of Isa alayhi salam. Then she became pregnant. And then the whole incident is mentioned in Surah Al-Maryam. It's a long story and we know most of it. What we want to talk about is now the birth of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam is born. He's born, obviously, with no father. The Quran addresses this issue as well. That if people have a problem with Isa and Islam being born without a father, so the, again the Jews had a problem, so they started to point fingers at Maryam. They said, Mary, she, na'udhu billah, she committed adultery, fornicated, whatever. And Allah addresses that in the Quran, wa bikufrihim wa qawlihim ala Maryam wa buhtan and azimah. Like, how did this is also one of the uh, beautiful and you could say defining factors about the Quran that the Prophet ﷺ in, in Mecca and Medina with very less interaction with Jews, Christians, outside world, he's addressing um, accusations that the Jews made, which not the general person doesn't know. That nobody, The general person at that time didn't know that the Jews are accusing Mary of some incident which happened 600 years ago of committing adultery. But there the Quran says, will be kufrihim wa qawlihim ala Maryam wa nazima. First of all, they disbelieved in Allah. وَقَوْلِهِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمْ بُهْتَانِ عَظِيمًا Accusing Maryam of such a grave act. And what was it? This is what we are talking about. That she came pregnant and then they said many things. So that, that's where the Jews went. And the Christians went the other way. They said if she wasn't born with a father, uh, if Isa wasn't born with a father, then that means his father was basically Allah. In whichever way they wanted to change it. So Isa was born. Then Allah allowed him to speak from the cradle. And he said, إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Again, straight away he is uh, removing all doubts. I am the servant of Allah and he gave me the kitab and many other things, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he said. Then he's born, he's living his life, he was born a Jew, he was sent to the Jews and he came with a warning to them that you people have moved off the path. So if you just look at the history of Palestine at that time, the Jews ruled and then uh, Bukht Nasr, he came and then he, the exodus happened etc. The Jews were still there and then the Romans came. So this is not Romans as in Catholics because there was no Christianity, Romans but pagans. And they were ruling and the Jews were a minority and they were oppressed. And this is a known fact. The Jews were oppressed. Now Isa Islam came to them and said, you will get honor again. This was why he was sent. When Once you change your path, come back to the teaching of Musa salam. So he didn't come with a new religion. He's basically saying, come back to the teaching of Musa salam. But he had, he had the ability to uh, make a few rules easier, etc. Because at that time, the Jews had left eating kosher, you could say, and many other rules. So this was Isa Islam. he came to them, he's explaining these things to them and they didn't want this. They wanted um, power on the earth, they wanted these kind of things and they felt 
that he wasn't t uh, calling them towards what they desired in this world. That was one thing. And there was a few other reasons that they didn't like Isa al -Islam. So Isa al is being sent to the Jews and the Jews are now finding a hatred for him. Uh, so what did they do? His own people now plotted against him. They said, we want him killed or we want him out of the equation. So they went to the king, Harod at the time. He was basically the king. He was a pagan again, I mentioned. And they said to him that this Isa, he's is basically now a problem to your kingship. He might take over, etc. He's getting too popular because remember Isa and Islam, Allah gave him some miracles. He could cure the blind, cure the leper through the help of Allah Taala, bring back from, from the dead, etc. So now they're saying he's getting too popular. He's going to be a threat for you. So basically get rid of him. And at that time, execution was the way to uh, deal with these things. So that's when now the king ordered for his arrest. And then they gathered around his house. And this is where now the difference happens. This is where um, Christianity goes one way and Islam goes on. Until this point, we're basically, to an extent, you could say the Muslims and Christians, maybe 90% are agreeing with most of the facts. Now, at this point, the Christians believe, of course, that he was taken, he was caught, and then because at that time, that's how they kill people, they crucify them, they crucified him, and then when they took his body down, and then uh, one of his disciples took him to the side, and then a few days later, he came back to life, etc. And that was atonement, he died for, for the sins, etc. And the Muslims obviously believe, and the Quran clearly says this. Neither did they kill him, neither did they even crucify him. So you were never put on the cross to even be taken down. Because they didn't kill you on the cross, they put you there injured and you died of hunger. So neither was he even put on the cross. But this entire matter was made uh, confused upon them. Basically, they, this was a matter which wasn't so clear. They, they were... They fell into confusion regarding this. People had different doubts about it. Even the people who were present didn't exactly know what happened. So even if they passed on an eyewitness report, they, that was also true. Allah has the power to do this. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ And then Allah ends the verse again saying, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا And definitely they did not kill him. That's the one thing we have to understand. They definitely did not kill him. So Muslims, we believe, obviously, he prayed to Allah. Allah raised him up to the heavens, to Jannah, and he will come back at the end of time. Um, the Jews believe he was killed because he was a false messiah. So he was the one that were, he was basically the false one and he was killed. And they're still waiting for the real one. And the Christians believe that he was put on the cross. And like I mentioned, um, so this is where the split happens. So this is Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and his life and what it means to us. And we have to learn many things from his life. One is obviously how he used to call towards Allah, wa call towards being humble, call towards that if we rectify ourselves, Allah will give us kingship in this world. And that's what the Jews didn't like. And that's what, the one thing we have to learn from his teachings. So this is the, what we have to learn from Isa alayhi salatu uh, life. So what's very, when we look at the Bible and then we look at the Old and New Testament and compare it to the Quran, in the Quran Allah talks about Isa alayhi salam himself. Allah clearly, very clearly says, Mal Masih ud Maryam illa Rasul. Isa alayhi salam Masih. Allah calls him the Masih. Masih means he was anointed because the prophets of Banu Israel, this baptism had some kind of um, origin. So one would kind of pass on, uh, kind of, one prophet would say to the next one that you are a prophet by kind of passing water on them, holy water. And that's how, so most likely he was anointed by Yahya or Zakaria a.s. So that's what it means by Masih. Mal Masih ibn Maryam illa Rasul. He's nothing except a prophet. Qad khalat min qabli rusul. Many prophets have come before him. Wa ummuhu siddiqa. And his mother is true. And then Allah gives a clear reasoning why they're both prophet, why he's a prophet and his mother is a human as well. They both would eat and drink. So if you have to eat, that means you get hungry, you need food. How can a God need food? How can somebody, the God, need uh, food? So Allah says this. In another verse, Allah even talks about how Isa himself will complain on their judgment. We call Allah Ya Isa ibn Maryam. When Allah is going to call out to Isa ibn Maryam, did you tell your people to take you and your mother as gods in place of me? So Allah is actually addressing Isa. We say Allah knows the answer, but it's for us to understand. Did you tell your people, meaning the Christians, to take you and your mother, Isa and Maryam, as gods apart from me? Oh, subhanak. Isa and Isa would say, no. How could it be? Glory be to you, are pure. Ma yakunu li an akula ma laysa li bihaq. I could not say this. In kuntu kultu faqad alimta, and then ta'alim wa fi nafsi wa na'adim wa fi nafsik inna kan ta'alim ghayub. I could not say this. You are the know of all things. You know I didn't say this. 
So this is the conversation that's going to happen on the Day of Judgment. This is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam making himself, he's saying, I am free from this. So this is Isa alayhi salam's life. His chapter will end, <coughs> it's not ended yet. Isa alayhi salam will come back on the, before the end of time. And that time the world will be very different. Um, the Mahdi will have come, the Jal will be coming, the false messiah, and these kind of things. We all know this is going to happen. And then Yanzilu Isa ibn Maryam Hakam and Adlan, Isa alayhi salam will come down at the, the, uh, the white minaret in the masjid in Dimashq, etc. He's going to come down, the Prophet ﷺ prophesies all of these things. He's going to have two angels with him. It's as if he's just had a shower, water will be dripping from him. And these kind of things. He's going to come down and then he's going to uh, break the cross. He's going to kill the pigs. He's going to, jizya will be taken away, no more tax, etc. And then Muslims will live. He'll kill the Dajjal and the Muslims will live. Uh, there'll be a, an era where the Muslims will be, or everyone will be united, not just the Muslims, because the Jews and Christians will accept Islam. At that point, those who are true and were waiting for him, they will accept because you can't reject it the truth about Isa al-Islam at that point. So this is where his story will end and he lived for 45 years according to some narrations and then there's a space next to him where he will pass away in Medin Munawara and he will be buried next to the Prophet and they will be resurrected uh, together. So this is where his life will end. So this is the entire story of Sayyidina Isa al-Islam. If you look at the Bible, if you look at what the Jews and the Christians say, first of all the Bible, it mentions that this is Trinity. And that the God is of three, and three is one, one is three, and all of these kind of things. If you very simply just look at some of the statements of Sayyidina Isa -Islam in the Bible. So not the Quran, the Quran is obvious. But the Bible, where Isa -Islam, he says that he, he calls towards his Lord. When he's on the cross apparently, even at that time he says, Oh Lord, why have you forsaken me? So who is he calling towards? And then um, many other times when he falls in frustration towards his Lord, etc. So he's obviously calling towards... Allah Taala is Lord. That's one thing. The second thing is that this whole concept of atonement, Isa al Islam, or what somebody dying for our sins, this was planted later. First of all, this was planted later. Why? Because the Christians couldn't, they didn't want to live a religious life. They just wanted to have belief, and that was enough. That's why they said when Isa, when he's died for our sins now, then that means now we can live whatever, however we want to live. We can do whatever we want because he's done the deed for us, and then we're going to be chosen people. Allah for God and then we're going to go to Jannah. Another thing we have to understand is that this whole concept of Trinity only came out later. It started with Paul and then slowly things started to get added but it didn't become the official stance until 300 years later. 300 years is such a long time. Like between the time of Isa and the Prophet was 600 years so half that time only then did the Christians start to believe that Trinity was the actual creed. That there's the Holy Spirit, there's the Father and there's the Son basically. So this was only 300 years after and he was taken in by Constantine, Constantine, the emperor. And that's only because he didn't want any more fighting within his religion. So that's why that happened. So this is just some brief history I wanted to give. Now we come to Islam. Islam, and this is why we have to be, always be grateful to Allah for allowing us to be Muslim, guiding us because it was not our, anything good from us. In some sh four short verses, Allah explains our creed. Ulhu Allahu Ahad. Say that Allah is one. Allah is Samad. Is, he is independent, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. he is not begotten nor will he beget, meaning he didn't come from anywhere, nothing created him and neither will he have children. Walam yakul lahu kufu and there is nothing like him. Simple, clear cut, upon which we can have no way, two ways of uh, arguing. And this is the, the tawheed that Allah Taala has gifted us and sent all the prophets to teach us. So this is Islam compared to all the confusion that came before it. So we have to, as Muslims, especially living in Christian countries, etc. We have to understand these things, very simple concepts, learn exactly where, which talking points we can bring up with Christians. Because the Quran, remember, it praises the Christians. I mentioned all of this, but the Quran still praises. You will find those with the most close ties with you, Muslims, and the most love, affection towards you will be the Christians. The ones who say, inna nasara. Why? Because they have uh, monks, they have priests who are actually they're teaching good things. Yes, they may believe that Jesus is the Son of God and some of them also don't. And they are quite humble. In their nature, they are pretty, they are humble because they learned from Isa Islam. If you look at even parts of the Bible, like the Sermon on the Mount by Isa Islam, by Jesus, even them teachings are very similar to what the Prophet and all the Prophets taught. So we learn this humility from Isa and Islam and is passed down through many of the Christians. 
So we use these, we try to get them close, and let's become a means of them becoming Muslim. That was just one thing I wanted to mention regarding Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salam. Now, very quickly, regarding Christmas. So now, obviously, because people assume, or it's claimed that Isa Alayhi Salam was born at this time. So what's the origin towards of this? We learn, as the brothers and sisters to inshallah kindly donate towards masjid. What's the origin of this? Is it actually the time he was born? If you just do a quick search on the internet, whatever you want to do, you'll see that most majority of the results, if you ask for the, the origin of Christmas, etc., that is Christian saying that we know this is not part of our religion. And now it's so famous, it's become uh, common even amongst Christians and, non -Muslims, and Muslims uh, and all other faiths as well. That this is not something that's from Christianity. Where did it come from? We know certain aspects of paganism went into Christianity and that's how it got changed. Paul was coming from the north and he's seen in Persian lands, etc. The paganism, worshipping fire, worshipping humans, etc. And all of this came through idol worship. And he brought this into Christianity and that's where the mix-up happened. So another thing that they used to do, especially in the Romans, is they used to celebrate the, end, the winter, winter solstice, the end, end of the harvest. And because it was very cold, etc. To warm them up, they'd have, a, they'd have a feast at the end of the year. And this was at this time, 25th of December. So then he, he basically they started the claim where, that Jesus was born on this time as well. So there's already a celebration happening. They added another celebration and this was uh, Christmas. If you look at the Christmas tree, if you look at the mistletoe, all of this has come from pagan rituals. All of this. So to claim it's from uh, the birth of Isa Islam who, where there's no documented evidence, that's false. And to say if it's any part of Christianity, it's also false. So as Muslims, we have to understand that first of all, we don't take part in these things. We don't even need to say Merry Christmas because even if it was truly his uh, birthday, then you can you can change it into some kind of other statement. What we should do is we make dua for them. So if somebody says Merry Christmas, you can say God bless you. They don't know, but you're actually asking Allah to turn them Muslim. They don't know about it, but that's basically what we are saying. Or we can say Happy Holidays and we can say these things. So this is very important for us to understand that this Christmas is nothing to do with religion. It's just basically, then it was commercialized later that uh, Saint Nick, who is basically Santa Claus, he, uh, he, the old depictions of him have many different colors. But only when Coca-Cola wanted to now start marketing him, that's where suddenly now he became red and he became a red jolly face. So even that is commercialized. So it's nothing to do with religion. We have to just make sure we understand this. And what we have to be very careful about is if our children are going to these um, Catholic schools where the first lesson is Bible and they're learning songs. And at the end of probably this, this last week, they must have sang some songs in assembly, etc. or at least heard them, that we instill within them the true creed, the true belief in who Allah is, who Prophet Muhammad is, who Isa is. And we just ask them, well, who is Jesus? And, you know, just gauge their reaction and understand where they are and how much we have to focus on this thing is very important because just it may be just be mere words right now and just words, but later on it could become something. Just send it, pass it into the sister section, inshallah. It could be. It could become something much more. So we need to focus on these things. This is this is a, a core part of our faith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith, he said, Man shahida la ilaha illallah, whoever believes that there is none who they worship except Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is messenger, wa anna Isa abdullah, and believes that Isa is the servant of Allah, wa rasuluh, and his prophet. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put it in one of the core tenets of our faith. So we have to make sure we focus on this. We have to remind ourselves every single, whenever we can, and especially teach our children, focus on our children as well, that Isa al -Islam was not just uh, a prophet, and he wasn't obviously the son of God. He was a Palestinian. Um, he was sent to the Jews. They rejected him. The Christians raised him too much. That's where we learn also that our, just like how Christianity changed over time, our religion can change over time. Yes, Allah has said our religion will change, will stay true. It will stay till the end of time. But innovations can come in, and it's very important for us to preserve our religion. Once a companion came to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet was saying that, you know, the Jews change their religion and etc. And our religion may change. And um, one of the companions said, how could that happen when you have the Quran etc. The Prophet ﷺ said to the companion, I did not expect you to be so foolish. Don't you think the Jews still pray, read the Torah? Don't, don't you think the Christians still have the Injil? No, no, we'll have the Quran. But still people will come and put innovations in etc. And we see that even these verses of the Quran which talk about Isa and Islam coming down, People have hijacked them and used them to talk about their own false messiahs. And somebody is coming after the Prophet Muhammad, somebody from different places. Even on this, on this island, we see people like this. It's very important we don't fall for these things. Because Allah says about the Quran, Through this Quran, Allah can guide and Allah can misguide. So we have to make sure we strengthen our beliefs in Allah every day. Learn through knowledge and also through pondering and understanding. And then also um, under, learn a little about the 
uh, Christianity, meaning where we can defend our religion, where we can explain things to people in a very nice way, because Islam is always being attacked. So we have to learn how we can defend ourselves and turn it upon people. Allah gives ability to act upon what said.